Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Space Science with Python. Today we are starting our meteor science project. So we are going to use Python to do some meteor research and well meteors or falling stars as you see in this image here are I would say a very common astronomical phenomenon. You probably have seen also several of them in the night. You have maybe heard about certain so-called streams or meteor populations like the Perseids or the Geminides and maybe you have also sometimes just seen an occasional meteor that is not associated with anything at all. Now the question is why should we care about meteors? Why should we care about falling stars? And well to start answering this question and not only tackling it with Python we have this video here today to give you a gentle introduction into the science of the falling stars. Now there are several books in this regard for um, professional astronomers like the book from Peter Jeniskins called Meteor Showers and Their Parent Comets and it is a pretty huge book with, with 780 pages. So don't worry, you don't have to read it and um, we will not go through the entire book in detail. Um, we will try to make some kind of balance between this very big scientific book and this book in, uh, for the German astronomers, uh, a meteor, an introduction into meteor science. It's, a, it's written in German, so if you're a German viewer, I can highly recommend uh, this book. It's way thinner and it's a perfect combination or um, of of uh, amateur astronomy and professional astronomy because meteor science is one of the astronomical yeah, science topics where amateurs and professionals are working close together and well i will give you at the very end of the of the video um yeah some explanation why this is the case and in the meantime i would suggest that we are starting to get an overview of meteors where they come from um, why we should care and also at the very end a small outline how we will build up this project using Python in the next couple of weeks. So I would suggest life, let's dive into the science. Before we dive into the slides we have to talk a little bit about the words. So there are a lot of words in space science or especially now in this um, in the domain of meteors and comets and so on that appear to be a little bit confusing. So let's go um, quickly through the different words, like for example the comets. Yeah, you have probably heard about comets, the dirty ice balls that evaporate gas and dust when they are coming close to the sun. Um, objects that are not evaporating anything that are made of stone or iron, they are called asteroids. And actually there are also some kind of hybrid forms called active asteroids that are somewhere in between, but we'll make a separate video about them, although they are also a source of uh, our meteors, but yeah, let's not talk, go too much in, too deep into the rabbit hole. Now, if we have objects that are smaller, and smaller I mean in the current definition between around 30 micrometers and one meter, it is a meteoroid, yeah? So it's still in space, it's a smaller object and a meteoroid, when it comes to our Earth, it um, goes into our atmosphere, heats up and illuminates the night sky, we get a meteor. So the meteor is not, let's say, the object, it's the appearance in the sky. So this falling star effect you see in the sky. Now, when the meteoroid, yeah, you see this, you see the meteoroid as a, as a meteor in the night sky, and the particle was large enough, maybe, yeah, caused a, exceeded a certain brightness, we call it also fireball, yeah? but this is like, let's say, a big meteor. And fireballs, they are not completely evaporated after the entrance. So they are, there are some remnants falling down on the ground that you can pick up, and these particles are called meteorites. Yeah? So the stony iron thingy you see, um, you find on the ground or maybe you've seen it in a museum or somewhere. So meteoroid causes a meteor and if it's big enough we get a meteorite. Yeah? So these are the different words and now the uh, particles that are smaller than 30 micrometers these are this is cosmic dust but cosmic dust will not cause any illumination in night sky so you will not see it um, though it's entering our atmosphere and it's also 
um, yeah, yeah, trapped in our in our home our home world. Cosmic dust are not the particles we see in the night sky. So these are all the wordings. I hope you're not too confused. The most important thing is meteoroid becomes the meteor. Yeah, the meteor is the appearance. And if you find something on the ground, it's a meteorite. Yeah, so these three words. Okay, let's go back to our original image I showed you in the very beginning. So this is a meteor and you see, well, it is like a long line here in this photo and it's not because the appearance is like a long line in the sky. It's mostly a moving dot yeah, that's becoming brighter and brighter and then it's vanishing again here. It's a long time exposure so that's why we see this line and you can see in this image the meteor started here in the top right of the corner. It started to become brighter and brighter and brighter. Here was the peak and after the peak uh, the brightness peak it started to vanish so this is like a small particle maybe only a size of a millimeter or so so very 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 small like a like a like a grain of sand with a very high speed and high speed i mean like really 15 18 20 25 kilometers per second so it's a very fast moving object that goes into our night sky now the question is now where does this particle come from and well you may know that our cosmic vicinity is not that empty. We have here the sun in our center, we have our planets and also our home planet but well there is a lot of stuff going on. We have asteroids, we have comets, we have something called the Jupiter Greeks, the Jupiter Trojans and so on. So there are a lot of different objects, asteroids, meteoroids and comets that are filling up this empty space between the planets and well one of the objects are as I said the comet. So here you see the comet P67 Churyumov Gerasi Menko and this was the comet that was being observed or no visited by the ESA probe Rosetta and the lander Phile and we see here a picture from the um, from the spacecraft the um, comet has a diameter of a few kilometers only and what you see here in this um, in this image is not a noise or something like that. These are like outgassing processes from the comet. So because the comet heats up from the from the sun we have a lot of gas and ice leaving the comet and not only gas we see also actual particles. So here's a small video from the from ESA there where you see a lot of different particles here flying around and this is not noise or uh, radioactive effects on the camera these are actual particles that were leaving the um the 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 uh the comet so yeah you see here a few a few moments uh, kept um, kept into this small animation of course in the background we see also some stars so we have to be really careful to see what are the stars and what are the dust particles but well these dust particles once they leave the comet they become a, a meteoroid and then flying around our in our um, solar system and uh, how this looks like this flying around I will show you at the very end. Now let's go into the next case the collisions. Now collisions happen yeah of course the asteroid belt is not as dense as you see in some science fiction movies or in some other movies like Star Wars or so. No there's a lot of gaps in between but well, the, 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 the universe is quite patient, yeah, we have a lot, a lot of time and once in a while objects collide, like here this object P2010A2, a comet um, that was kept, kept in the moment where it was potentially hit by a, another object causing this kind of X figure and also this, uh, this long stream of different uh, particles or, or or causing this huge cloud here. So collisions are quite common and collisions cause the creation of cosmic dust and meteoroids. Now another effect is what we have observed on the asteroid Bennu. Now Bennu um, was visited by a NASA comet and we see, uh, NASA mission and we see here the object with a lot of rocks and so on floating um, on the on the surface and here we see also some particles. Now these particles here they are also meteoroids. There are some small rocks. Some are falling back on the asteroid causing again some collision and then creating new particles and so on. But the question here was why do they appear? And it seems that these particles, um, well there's a, a lot of different effects but 
uh, one effect is probably thermal fracturing. So because of thermal stress, yeah, um, the rock heats up and cools down, heats up and cools down, you have some kind of cracking and in other cracks that yeah, cause, um, that are due to this um, thermal stress on the material. And at some point this cracking process is so violent that material is kicked out into um, into the space. Um, there is also other effects like for example rotational loss like imagine you have a, a, a sphere and it's rotating like our home planet and if it's rotating faster and faster and faster then eventually the, um, the this effect causes particles also to leave the object and you may ask why should an um, asteroid accelerate its rotation well this effect are described and I will put this into a short video or a YouTube short to explain you how this happens. Now these are the effects that are quite um, common and what we do is not only the dynamics of the um, of the meteors we are also um, we can also um, catch up the um, the, the, the spectrum of the object when it's entering. So there are like two ways, either creating a spectrum like you see here, where you find then, I don't know, calcium lines and also um, magnesium and other components. Yeah, so you can derive the chemical composition of the particle. But um, in our tutorial here, we will talk about mostly the astrodynamical properties. Yeah, so the astrodynamical properties, they can be derived, for example, with a, with a, with a stereoscopic camera. So you have one camera on point a and one on point B, they observe the same part of the sky. And what you have is a huge 3D camera basically where you can then determine the dynamical properties of the particle. But how this camera system works, this will be part of our future videos. Now, um, and as a summary, we can say very simplified, there are three topics that are interesting when we do uh, meteor research. First of all, we are interested in the mechanical, in the chemical composition of the particles. So we know they come from space, we know they come from some parent bodies. These parent bodies are extremely old, maybe even associated with the birth of our solar system. So the question is, how are they composed? Where do they come from? What was the original composition of these parent bodies and also the distribution of these chemicals in our solar system. The second is of course the astrodynamics. So where do the particles come from? Where are the streams? How are the different streams somehow linked together with these bodies, with the asteroids, with the comets and based on the dynamics, what kind of uh, dynamical history we can derive um, from for our solar system or where do these things evolve in the future? And based on this, we have something where yeah, we can also um, analyze the cosmic environment. So the thing is, of course, when we plan to uh, travel to other planets, to, to Mars or to even visiting some asteroids, well, we have, of course, a lot of dangerous things in the, in the universe, like radiation, we have vacuum, of course, and all this stuff, but we have also, um, meteoroid streams we have also cosmic dust and so on and imagine you're sitting in a tin can flying through space for a few months eventually you will um, go through one of these streams and yes they are not extremely dense or they have not the density as associated in the space some science fiction or space movies but there is a potential hazard and if a particle that is a one millimeter sized hits your spacecraft with 30 kilometers a second, well, this can become dangerous. And these things have been observed here on the planet as well. And um, not only with cosmic dust, but also with uh, space debris. Now, these things do not matter uh, in interplanetary flight, but we have to consider also the dynamics for future space flights. Now, how are we going to do our videos? Now, first of all, we need data. And since we are doing astrodynamical analysis, we need in our first videos, we need to obtain data from the internet, from some sources to create our own small database using Python. In the second step, I would suggest that we try to understand the dynamics as we did it already for the asteroids, for example, and maybe put them into the relation with asteroids and comets to see if we already find some kind of patterns. In the third step and fourth step, we are then determining the streams and the sporadics. And since the streams and sporadics, they appear 
also here on or they are yeah observed here on, the, on, on earth like the purse seeds of the geminis we can also make some own observations yeah we don't need a telescope we just need ourselves a piece of paper and counting them and we can then derive our own scientific conclusions from these observations i will show you how we will do that and then at the very end we will also do some deep learning and um yeah, I think this is also uh, something interesting. I will not spoil you what we are going to do, but this will, I think, be pretty interesting. Now let's move into the tooling we have here on the internet. Maybe here is one example called meteorshowers.org. Now this is a little bit spoiler, uh, spoiler. Where do comets come from and how do they look? Like here, the purse seats that are um, observable in mid-August. Here is uh, the Sun in the center, Mercury, Venus, and here is the Earth. And here is the intersection between the Perseid stream and our home planet. And you see, yeah, the dynamics of these objects and how they distribute over the entire um, solar system. Now we can also choose other objects, like for example, the Geminids I told you here in December. Up ah, there you see they have a total different properties. We have to move a little bit here and you see they are in a way smaller orbit around the sun. And maybe let's take maybe a third one. Or what about everything at once? Hopefully the computer will not crash. Now this works. Now this looks really fascinating, I would say. Now look at that. This is pretty beautiful. Um, how all this particles are moving in some kind of cosmic dance this is this is pretty this is pretty nice this is pretty cool i would say and imagine how many particles are out there i mean we are only talking about particles that were detected we, um, on earth yeah so particles intersecting our home planet imagine how many other particles are out there this is this is insane but uh, instead of now talking too much about these kind of objects and being too fascinated by this i could now talk maybe probably for hours let's go to the very last thing i promised you how is amateur astronomy and professional professional astronomy in this topic um merged somehow and there's one thing called the international meteor organization and it's a pretty nice organization because they are amateurs and they are professionals working together. And they are, um, there are some, also some journal where you can also write your own articles. There's also a conference called the International Meteor Conference. Unfortunately, I wasn't there now the last three years, but um, yeah, I, have, I must find some time to go there. And there you have a lot of um, links for photos and videos, tips for and tricks uh, for observations and also some databases as well. Some resources like the Meteor calendars, ongoing projects or other books and so on. Also a shop, the conference and of course the journal called WGN. And um, yeah, you need an IMO membership for this, but this is it's not that it's it's really it's really cheap so i'm not making it's not paid advertisement or something um don't worry i'm just telling you that this is like really the um organization to uh to join so i'm not getting paid here to make some advertisement or so this community is already pretty large and uh, well known in the um in the space space community so uh yeah don't get me wrong or something yeah, so this is pretty pretty much it. Um, the introduction into our topic, into Space Science with Python for the meteor objects. And well, I would say, um, I hope you're looking forward into, um, into the topic to understand these things here we see now in this amazing simulation. And maybe we will, yeah, create our own Python scripts and create some interesting scientific insights so if you have any questions please uh, leave a comment uh, comment here and um, in the meantime stay curious and until next time